<laughs> <laughs> it's like this. Overlanding generally involves a whole bunch of accessories while you're out in the wilderness. What most people don't think about is where do you keep all that stuff? Having it bounce around in here really isn't that great. So on this week's episode, we're gonna develop some interior and exterior storage solutions so you don't get hit in the head with a D-ring while you're cruising down the trail. As you guys might know, we have a bunch of engineers that work here designing parts for all the different European cars. For the roof rack stuff, we actually started with some different platforms first. So Joe's gonna take you over to those where he can talk about what he designed for the E53. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Joe Cachera. I am one of our R&D engineers at ECS. I've been here for a little over a year and a month now. Uh, one of the first big project lines I got assigned was modular overland roof racks. And that encompasses, I want to say, four projects across eight different platforms, one of which being uh, E53X5, which I did on Mike's vehicle. Yeah, so it's a fully floating design. Uh, the only contact points are on where it's going to be mounting. So we're doing it such that you can avoid any kind of bulb seal uh, needed, I'd say, along the front leading edge of the fairing or on any other portions. Um, on our, the side panel, I've got a bunch of tie down cleats and slots such that you can run ropes and straps whichever way you might want. Um, and then I have my slots and holes at the top such that you can do uh, any combination of our modular crossbars. We're offering a 80-20 style crossbar and a round crossbar such that you can run um, you can carry things that have that utilize T-nuts to hold them down, or you can just uh, lay something across it and strap it down with the round ones. It's really up to you. And then we come to the front fairings. On the front fairings, it's the same kind of deal. You can t either tie stuff down through the slots we have, uh, either with ratchet straps or ropes. And then you could also mount, say, light bars or like helipod lights. They're sized up to 10 millimeters. Um, and then there's some slight bends in it in order to clear the roof. Uh, nice. The other nice part about that makes it a little bit more rigid so it's not just a big flat piece of sheet metal. Same deal with the back, has the slots and the uh, ovular holes so that you can really thread through whatever you want. A lot of utility with this. It's definitely all pretty all-encompassing. There's a lot that you can do with this. Uh, and then in order to mount it to the roof, BMW does this weird cast component where the roof rail actually bolts through and then these bolts hold the whatever the stanchion is down to the roof. So in order to save, um, make it a little bit more manufacturable and just make a more elegant piece than this, what we did was just a bent sheet metal bracket and then some cast poly pieces such that it seals against the roof and you don't have any water intrusion. And then some metal spacers so that you're not just squishing your poly out when you compress the bolts. And then and in order to hold it all together, the fairings and the side panels, we're also utilizing 8020 uh, underneath the front and the rear fairings, held down with M6 hardware and T-nuts, and then these nice little corner brackets that are gonna be riv nutted and uh, use nylon lock nuts to hold it to the fairings. All right, so the roof rack's here, made it from QI. All we have to do is install it. T-nuts game. Easy the tailgate makes this easy. Look at that. Look, accessories. We're accessorizing. We're actually doing something with it, not just putting it on the car. <laughs> so we have the roof rack installed. Overall, pretty good success. Uh, we are gonna add a foot 
in the back here because we used both ends of the roof rack, the, the existing mounting feet, but we didn't use the center one and we think it'd be a, a lot more rigid with it. So that's one change we're gonna make going to production. And the other one is the front fairing. There's not a ton of space behind it, like where it meets the roof. And we're hoping those bends would give it enough rigidity uh, so that it wouldn't buff it or do anything funny. But if you get up to speed, you get that noise, which is unfortunate. So Joe already designed up a little brace. We're gonna go back and throw that on and then we can make those changes and go into production. Um, it's not abnormal, you know, that's that's the point of prototyping. That's why we go through these things. I wanted to show you that, you know, not everything goes flawlessly, but we adapt and overcome and we'll have a good solution going to production. So not a big deal. A couple small tweaks, realistically very easy. But uh, yeah, overall, great success. So where this uh, front fairing bolts to the roof rack, it's really rigid and where those corner brackets are is really rigid. However, in the center section, it kind of flaps around and hits the roof. So what we did with was come up with a simple L-channel style brace that we're gonna rivet on and that should get rid of the issue we're having in the middle and stiffen up the whole piece. <laughs> All right, so this doesn't really line up with anything particularly overlandy or off-road about this build, but it's something I wanted to do while we we're here. Uh, this is a V8 X5, V8s sound good. So I designed some quick little muffler deletes here. So you can cut your stock exhaust, slip this on, nice clamp on solution, and it's easily reversible if need be. So that's what's a little too snug. We'll open that up for production. Make it a little easier, but it goes in the right spot. Hangers go to the right spot, which is good. Power tools. Okay. Let's wiggle this. Make sure we're fully engaged. If you have a little adjustment, before you tighten this down, I like to throw the tips on to make sure you can line everything up. Um, so that way you have some adjustment, some wiggle room. Like this. There we go. Thoughts on it so far? Pretty good. I'm pretty picky about tip placement. So I'm gonna leave everything a little loose. I'm gonna snug this up, snug this up just a little bit, put the car down and kind of look around and then compare it to the other tips when we get those on because if they're little cattywampus, that's gross. So so where to cut is kind of the big question. Uh, for this, I picked the center of this flat section here between these two bends, which basically lines up with directly under the sway bar. So pretty easy location. Um, we sell these Schwaben exhaust cutters, which if you don't feel like pulling out power tools, really makes this job a lot easier. So I've already got the mark there. You basically do this for a minute. Five minutes later. <laughs> it's not as smooth as I anticipated. <laughs> it's gone though. <laughs> it's, it's out. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are like, oh, I can just use a pry bar. But for how much these are, I, th I thought I was in the pry bar camp too, but it's so easy. It's so easy. Why wouldn't you buy this thing? Yeah, look at that. it's so easy. Sure, pry bar works, but like, come on. Ta-da. Totally didn't put a big dent in it when I dropped the muffler. <laughs> it's fine. Start these. Ouch. Which always go upside down. I 
I am ready. I think it sounds pretty okay. Thoughts? It's louder, that's for sure. It sounds better than I thought. Yeah. Kind of had a weird... This car doesn't have all its cats anymore, so... We should do one like wide open pull. I was oh, trying yeah. to get it up to temperature. Oh. Uppers. Uppers. What are you doing? Oh, he's got something. No, he doesn't. Don't go. Not too bad. What do you think? All right, we have some nice exterior storage done. Uh, the roof rack came out great. We've got muffer deletes done. Next up, we're gonna go over what I came up with for some interior storage. All right, so this is the scan data for the rear panel stuff. I did kind of dismantle a bunch and try to scan behind everything, trying to see what was a rugged mount for these panels. I don't want anything floppy. I'm gonna put some stuff on there of some weight and drive around. So I wanna make sure the screws are going into something real, not just a plastic clip or something like that. So there's a bunch of layers in here of trim and different uh, extrusion pieces I came across. So I was able to use that screw from the extrusion over here. Um, I'm showing both these brackets, but that's just a test fitment thing. I'll show you in a second. Ignore this front roof right now. But uh, yeah, that works well. This rear bracket is going to go in the rear partition shelf hook area. There's a screw that goes into the body there. So I kind of had to make this elaborate bracket that goes out to here. Uh, should be strong enough though. And up here, there's the partition, I think it's for like uh, dog net stuff or something like that. I forget what this looks for up here. But that's the only mounting point up there. I scanned the hook itself where it clips in and everything. I was able to make a bracket that could get sandwiched between it and the headliner and come in. There'll be a couple of rivet nuts in these locations for that panel. Let me hide this again. And then on top of that, there's the pre-LCI cars, which had this front location over here as a mounting position for that screw, not the rear position. So I made this bracket flippable. You'll take, you know, what is the left bracket on an LCI car will be the right bracket on a pre-LCI car. So that way, you're just putting them in a different set of those slots and you can just flop them left to right and it's the same assembly. So that way we don't have additional parts, no additional hardware, all that should fit in there nice. So that's about it for the panel. I kind of trimmed it nice around the headliner and this region over here. And overall, fits nice. All right, our rear storage panels are here. They've passed QI, so we're gonna try to install them. You ready? I guess. Go ahead. You ready? This thing, and I don't, I think it's this guy. Oh yeah, there's a screw there. I just had to like mean it like so. Okay. Now, this so this will do. Yeah, that. So. Easy little bracket. Then I'm going to take some hardware. I'm suspecting it's going to be easier to bolt this piece on now than later. I think this is the comfiest time we've ever filmed. That's what I'm saying. This is nice, comfy, nothing's dirty. Why don't we do more <laughs> products like this? 
this is a quick in your driveway, you know, install. We're gonna do that. Now this, I know there's a difference between early and late cars, but I made the brackets flippable, as you probably saw on screen, so that you just flip which one goes where, depending on if you have an early or late model. So this is this side on a late car, on an early model, this would be the passenger side. But I couldn't remember which was which. Take this out. Okay, we take that screw, and we're gonna replace it. This screw, which is going to be a different size Allen. Now we're gonna take this screw out. That guy, I'm gonna replace it with hopefully this guy. If my math was correct. This should be able to do that. that. Okay, we've added quite a bit of usable space to the X5. We've got some nice interior storage here for everything that you want to keep clean and organized, and we've got space on the outside for everything that's going to be dirty and you don't want in the car. Uh, now we can hear the thing quite a bit better too with these muffler deletes, so all great things. We're actually going to be taking a one week break between this episode and the next one you see, so you know, happy holidays. That's why we're going to be taking some time to see our families. Um, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and you can follow me at Mike the Day. <laughs>